All right, we're going to do a tutorial now on the masonry looking column layout. So masonry meaning sort of like if you laid out um, bricks and they're like or, or stones that are sort of slightly different sizes and they kind of all stack up. So it's it's kind of a variation on the grid. It also looks a lot like the um, it's going to look a lot like a it's going to look like a, a grid except for it will allow for different sized uh, items in the grid. So you notice they don't all line up. They can be whatever size you want. Um, and then there's also a way to make it so they don't wrap in the middle. So it's kind of like a newspaper column. I think that would be a good way. And it's also uh, responsive so that makes it easy to set up a responsive layout with a grid. Um, so it's a two-dimensional look. And then masonry, you'll, if you read about masonry, and again this used, used to have to use some JavaScript and there was a library out there that would help you with it, but now it can be done with CSS. So that's what we're going to look at. All right, let's 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 see if we can get this masonry effect going by using our column layout. So the first thing that we want to do is add our CSS file. So we're just going to add the folder, the file, open up the index and link that in. Micro local style. We're in CSS style. All right, and then the next thing we want to do is to center the header. So we'll just uh, get that style sheet going there. And you know, sometimes you might want to add comments to these. Some of them are obvious, centering the header. Some of them not so obvious, and comments can help someone looking at your style sheet figure out why you did, why you, why you, what the rule you created is is intended to do. Next thing we want to add a height and image, height width and height to our image, and we've already done that technically in the HTML just to help with rendering. But it's okay to do it again here, and actually, this will take precedence um, if we were to change it. But uh, that uh, our page should just basically we've just modified the centering of the of the header, um, and now we want to center the image and the quote author. So that's also pretty obvious what's going on there. Probably don't need a comment on that. And then, um, ah, you know what? We did not do adding the class Mason to our section tag. So that's going to be important because we're going to use that class name Mason to, to specify a lot of our rules. So class equals Mason. And I could tell that I hadn't done that because these were not getting centered as I expected here. Um, but yeah, I forgot to do that. So the next thing that we want to do is style the article container. So the articles, again, are containing a div with the image, a header three, and a paragraph. And we just want to give some padding and margin and some background color. So we'll just get that going. And that gives us, you know, we're still in kind of a nice uh, mobile first layout, um, but we can only view a few of these at a time on our big screen, whereas with all this real estate, it's kind of wasted, we can do some work to take advantage of that. So we're going to do it with this column. So we're going to use the column layout. We're going to say the column count is three and the width is 200 and the gap is 5 pixels. So that magic number 200, the reason why we want to do that, and so look at, we've, we've got our, ah, we're missing something though. Notice how this, this particular article kind of bled over into the second column, and we really want to keep our articles together regardless. And that's because we skipped this step which is to tell it to break inside to avoid a column break. 
and this explains a little bit about the WebKit. So WebKit is the engine that runs Safari, and they might have a they have a slightly different property name. So maybe this is a newer property, and it hasn't been implemented the same across browsers. So we'll just get that in there, and that should fix our yes. So now we're getting our article rendered all together without wrapping over. So now we're taking up some more space. It's easier to kind of let your eyes scan about and see what's what's going on there. Um, the question is, you know, why 200 pixels? Well, we'll see when we look at this with responsive viewer that we are getting, let's see, we'll come over here to responsive, that we are getting you know, a pretty nice responsive look at this uh, content. And if we were, and the, and generally, you know, you can go and kind of Google like, um, you know, device sizes. I think you can get like something, popular screen resolutions. You can Google this anywhere. You can find better tables, you know, so you can kind of see. But one of the things to keep in mind is that Generally, the pixels you're going to be. I tend to just think around 320, the iPhone size. You know, the phones have gotten a little bigger, but you want to keep kind of that idea of 300 pixels as being your maximum size on a phone. And so, therefore, we want to keep this smaller. We want to keep this down under 300 pixels. And that keeps it so that we get a single article. And it's nice to read. If I were to make this three, let's see, if I were to change this to three, let's just see what the effect would be. That's still okay there. Um, if I went down to an iPhone, yeah, that, that actually looks okay. But there is a chance that if I make those too big, that when I, when I, um, go smaller like let's take a look at what happens here oh that's still looking pretty good well you can play around with it but I found occasionally that if you're if you're up to 300 for your um, your chunk of horizontal width that it won't necessarily uh, behave the way that you want so um, anyway that's why I've got this 200 pixels but it's it's always kind of good to you know kind of mess with your uh, you know play around with your sizes and you can do that easily in here. So while I'm in um, when I'm in Dev Tools, I can highlight this section. I can find these, and I can you know like kind of see what happens if I make this really big. What if I change this to four? Um, you know, you can, this is where designers work to kind of really tweak, get the final look of what they want. But if I, just using the up and down arrow keys uh, to, to change these. Uh, so let's say I'm going to make this gap really big. What does that look like? You know, so these are tools that you can play around with. But sometimes the numbers can seem arbitrary. Sometimes they are. Um, but anyway, this is this is what I've specced out here. So we've got the 200. Um, the footer, so this is just right now, what does the footer look like? It's just kind of shoved over there in the corner. So we're just giving it some um, margin on the right and left to kind of get it away, or I guess top and bottom. All right, so that is that assignment. And let's just double check that this, we've got the, the mobile look, and then we've got the, the the bigger look, the full screen. So we can check this in. And this is a nice. I um, I like this layout. You know, it's it works well when you have multiple. Sometimes we call these cards. Um, it's kind of an easy card where you've got images, headers, and text. All right, so that is the masonry effect using the column layout.